Okay, so it's uh, hardly the first week of January and already it's fairly warm and humid in Mumbai. So it's a bit hot here as I record this since AC is not on. Uh, let's conclude this adaptation gap report from the UNEP 2023 year report uh, with this last podcast uh, concluding on what is loss and damage. While there is no commonly agreed upon definition, loss and damage is most commonly understood as the adverse effects of climate change that are not or cannot be avoided by mitigation and adaptation efforts. We'll see the history in a minute, but I think the definition itself has evolved to basically try and avoid the chances of legal liability for the rich countries who may have to pay for some of these loss and damage. So if Pakistan or Philippines are getting hit with some climate event like a huge flood or a typhoon and if it is made worse by global warming is there somebody responsible for paying these countries for additional damage than you know Philippines gets typhoons Pakistan's Pakistan gets floods but if they are made much worse is there a way to uh, pay for the additional damage so it gets tricky and if you say yes then you are obviously then legally liable in in some sense you are admitting to your liability so it can get tricky if lawyers get involved right this definition implies that there are two types of loss and damage those that exceed adaptation limits and those that can be minimized by ramping up adaptation efforts and finance the limits to adaptation are the points at which adaptation fails to avert intolerable climate impacts they are typically classified as being either hard or soft in terms of the limitations hard limits are typically those associated with physiological responses to changing climates and other than reducing greenhouse gas emissions there are few options available to humans to avoid the points at which climate sensitive systems are fundamentally damaged it could be fisheries human health could be uh, ecosystems biodiversity and so on so, or crop so some crops may become uh, you know uh, uneconomical economically not viable soft limits are those that arise from failures to implement adaptation actions that could effectively reduce vulnerability so you have the option of reducing vulnerability by implementing adaptation but there are barriers or other limitations which are preventing the country or the region from doing this this failure can be for cultural economic and or political reasons so if there's a war going on then obviously the people in charge of the wars which may be may not may or may not be just and maybe just uh, some fun uh, some f- crazy guys having by invading people then <laughs> adaptation will take a back seat right key messages then from the chapter that i ex- you know i'm reducing again to a very small podcast in the united nations framework convention on climate change unfccc loss and damage has emerged as the third key pillar of climate policy alongside mitigation and adaptation to address ever increasing climate impacts in developing countries that are particularly vulnerable to the adverse effect of climate change losses and damages arise when efforts to avoid or minimize climate impacts through mitigation and adaptation fail so we're talking about extreme events as well as slow changes or chronic changes such as warming loss of precipitation uh, agricultural yields health and so on given the slow progress of mitigating greenhouse gas emissions and of adapting to climate risks some losses and damages are occurring already and further loss and damage is going to be unavoidable there is a broad typology of responses available for both economic and non-economic losses and damages that must all respect country ownership this sentence is a bit strange there is a broad typology of responses available for both economic and non-economic losses and damages that all must respect that must all respect country ownership and be equitable i have no idea why all is thrown in there so that must all so all typologies of uh economic and non-economic losses and damages must respect country ownership and be equitable inclusive accessible and adequate but the lack of conceptual clarity is a clear barrier 
to making progress on loss and damage. Yeah. As you saw, it's been negotiated for a while, and we'll see the the history schematic in a minute as well. Many uncertainties remain regarding the financial needs to address loss and damage, but innovative funding sources and governance structures must be found to reach the necessary scale at which loss and damage has to be dealt with. So this should be the last slide. The emergence of loss and damage in the climate negotiations started around uh, COP 13, 2007, but discussion would have started earlier. So in Bali, first consideration of means to address loss and damage launched. I think the word additionality was in there at that time, if I remember correctly, but you can look it up. Jumping to COP16 in Cancun in 2010, work program uh, on loss and damage established. COP18 in 2012 in Doha, work program concluded, role of COP conference of parties in addressing loss and damage agreed. So work program concluded, role of COP in addressing loss and damage agreed. COP19 2013 Warsaw, Warsaw International Mechanism and Executive Committee established to actually address this in a more formal way beyond just negotiations. COP202014 in Lima, two-year work plan of the uh, Warsaw International uh, Mechanism agreed, organization and governance of WMI XCOM agreed. COP21-2015 in Paris, Paris Agreement came about, of course. Article 8 stated, avert, minimize and address loss and damage. Clearing house for risk transfer and uh, force on displacement mandated. So clearing house for risk transfer and force on displacement TFT mandated. COP22-2016, Marrakesh, uh, first WIM review, development of a new five-year rolling work plan. In Fiji Bonn in 2017, Fiji Clearing House for Risk Transfer launched, five-year rolling work plan endorsed, COP24-2018 in Katowice, TFD, uh, so Transfer Force, whatever this was here, so I have to be careful, Force on Displacement, so trans Risk Transfer and Force on Displacement, TFD. I have to go, you have to go and ma make sure you understand the terminology. I'm being lazy here. TFT present recommendations for integrated approaches to avert, minimize, and address displacement. 2019 uh, in COP25. Did I say 2019 somewhere else by mistake? Okay. Santiago Madrid, second WIM review. Santiago Network for Loss and Damage Mandated, SNLD. COP2621, Glasgow, SNLD functions agreed. Glasgow Dialogue established. 2022, COP27, Sharm el Sheikh. Decision to establish loss and damage funding arrangements and fund SNLD institutional arrangements finalized. Okay, so I read it wrong. Decisions. Decision to establish loss and damage funding arrangements and fund. SNLD institutional arrangements finalized. COP28 will join this history in a minute, but looking at examples of economic and non-economic loss and damage from extreme and slow onset or chronic events, economic Agricultural production, business operation, tourism, physical assets include infrastructure and property. Uh, extreme weather events include droughts, floods, storm surges, heat waves, and tropical cyclones. These are loss and damage, uh, loss of and or damage to economic and non-economic here. Society, so indigenous knowledge, societal cultural identity, heritage and so on. Individuals, of course, life, health and human mobility can be affected, which is non-economic. And environment, so biodiversity, ecosystem services, non-market goods, as we have discussed them many times. Here, due to impacts associated with extreme weather events, economic, sorry, extreme weather events and slow onset events, I did it wrong before. Do, uh, so sea level rise, glacial retreat and related impacts increasing temperatures, loss of biodiversity, land and forest degradation, ocean acidification and desertification. Some of these count as irreversible because if you have glacial retreat, even if you do all you can to stop global warming or reduce it, building glaciers takes for a long time. Sea level rise then also will take a long time to recede 
and loss of biodiversity can take long time but not as long as glaciers and sea level rise ocean acidification and so on and so forth okay <coughs> so that concludes my short summary of the adaptation gap report 2023 from the united nations environmental program i hope it helps but the report is available you can always go back and uh, look up the details as usual i only do a brief introduction and pick things out of the long reports subjectively i have to emphasize this is all my way of presenting it somebody else may do it very differently obviously many will be better than me but as long as you're listening to me you probably will say it's useful or not send me a message okay